Now, as we look around here, I see some interesting things. We all heard of the song of the Edmunds Fitzgerald. And I look Very around nice. here and I see some stuff. <laughs> Tell me a little bit. Is that the real telephone off there? That's the starboard telephone. That wasn't, now, <laughs> I shouldn't even be saying this because <laughs> I might get in trouble eventually. But um, yeah, so the Fitzgerald, in 95, we went down. Bruce was the pilot on the, I ran the job, and we recovered the, the diving bell up on the oh. left-hand side there. Were you down there yourself at the Edmunds Fitzgerald, or were you up on no, top? No, I was, I was, by that time, I was supervising, and, and I was too fat to get in the suit by then. <laughs> I was, no, no hope for either one of us. They were carrying tons and tons of, see the little The pellets? balls right there? Yeah, they're, they're called taganite. Oh, taganite, okay. And these are iron ore balls. And there were tons of it. And then they figure that night that the cargo uh, decking, get, something gave loose or something and water started filling and, and they just started taking on water. Then they, they went down and then they- Did it break in half the boat? It, yeah, it ended up like on the, the front half and that's, there's two halves right there's there, the other halves. halves over there. That's right. Now, is that an actual picture? That's, no, that's an that's, uh, artist's conception, okay. but, that, but that was after the survey done. Okay, that's so that's off they, the survey that they took a picture off of it. Yeah. And they, you got that phone that's, that's fairly interesting. The Navy was, was there with um, Joe McGinnis and National Geographic and that, and they had their, um, what's the camera they wanted the, um, they they took the pictures to, uh, like for the cover of the sh of the of the National G. They they took it right off the videos of the, H, that they were uh, down there taking. Okay, I'm not sure what the cam. It was a million dollar camera that they had. They you just developed it. Oh, interesting. And that's how they ended up with the with the pictures off it. With the pictures. Now, right. as we look around here a little bit, you got the newt suit in that picture, the Edmunds Fitzgerald. Yeah. Now that newt suit. You have an hour or two in one of those, hey? Well, I got a few hours in. How many hours you got in one of them nude suits? Oh, oh I don't know. I, I, I got on this picture. This bring is, her out here so we can take a gander. This was from the Bredolben. What's that? This was a wreck that went down Franklin, one of Franklin's wrecks. That was from the Bredolben, and that was an expedition we did in, in 83. Then when did that boat go down? 1853. Find anything interesting in it? Well, we, what it was, was. Is that you in there? That's me. No sh That's me there. Now, yeah. explain a little bit about this suit. It's a one atmosphere. Okay. So you're not worrying about pressure. You're not worried about decompression sickness. And you go to a thousand feet. Was it nice in there? Well, it was cozy. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to fall asleep anytime soon, it? but no. it's not as bad as wearing that thing. Yeah, this, this is what they call a wasp. Now, the other one I'm in there, the yellow one there, that's after we did this job, Phil Newton said he could build a better suit, so he, he did. He, he built this one. He built this one. If you notice the arms on this one, okay, you see the segmented joints yep. here? Well, the only thing that turned on this one was, was this. I mean, there was, we only had a limited movement. So when Phil said, no, I'm going to build a better suit, and he did. He made the shoulder turn, this turn, and this elbow turn. So you had a better range of motion. And this is what brought, into, brought, that brought, the, brought the newt suit out. Okay, so it's a far superior. And that yeah. one over here that I see, this one here, is this... This here is a newer suit, this one here? This was the Exo suit. The yeah. Exo suit, that's the newer version. That, that's the newer, newer version. Newer version. Uh, this is just in the, in the shop, there's Phil Newton. And this is... Who's that th there? That was me. We were just sizing it up. I still could fit in it. <laughs> How many hours do you have in this? Oh, I probably got... Well, just on training, I had uh, uh, 20 hours... Oh, of a of a gym suit. No, that far corner one there. That's a gym suit. That was one of the first ADS suits. Well, it wasn't one of the first, but it was the 
the thing that started it. That's, that's what started it, hey? Yeah. That's a gym, gym suit. It was made by um, an Italian. And then the, an English took it over, U-Mill, and they built it. Then they built this. But this one was limited because it had no, no thrusters on it. So okay. When, so when we, they when built, built the, the other ones, they when built, they built the, the Wasp. When they built the Wasp, that had thrusters. And when they built the, the new suit and the actual suit, it all had thrusters on it. So now we, the original, did they have an umbilical cord? It was just free. You just went in the way you went. It was all self-supportive. It was self-supported on the inside, but all you had is a lifting cable. There was nothing coming down from the surface. Okay. There was no and communications. I mean. Communications went through the, the lifting cable. Interesting. But, but there was no uh, exchange of uh, atmospheres or anything. You made your own atmosphere inside. Interesting. So you made a 21% atmosphere. All you're doing is adding oxygen. And How safe was it? It was, of all the dives throughout the world, there was only one accident so far. What happened? Um, they had a lifting um, so it wasn't the suit's fault. It was a mechanical. It was a mechanical issue that came through it, and of course, when it, uh, when the guy was in it, then uh, it filled up with water and he drowned. But that was one accident. It was um, out of thousands of dives of, of throughout the world. They, they had. Did you feel safe in it? Oh yeah, yeah. I felt yeah. really, really safe. In and that. you were the test pilot of them suits for Phil. You uh, and Pat. Uh, me, Pat. Yeah. Yeah. And Bruce Fiocco. Yeah, there was... There was Who cut the bell off the Edmonton? Was that Bruce that cut the that bell was, off? That was Bruce. Now, Bruce lives in Kamloops, eh? That's right. Yeah. And he cut the bell off the Edmonds Fitzgerald? Yeah. Okay. We developed... With Pat and myself and Bruce, we developed a procedure to cut the... Because everybody said, oh, you can't, you can't cut with using the suit. But the, the, the dexterity of the arms... Made, made us that we could cut it. Now, <laughs> you got a few hours of this, don't you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How many hours you got with this? Well, it picked the, the ship squeal off the, off the Bredolvin. I got it off. You got it off of this? You, you did it? Yeah? Yeah. And right there, when you got her on there, you got your lock. That's your lock. So you put her on there, make sure. Make sure. And that beer opener. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's pick your nose if you, can get, if you get it through the glass. <laughs> yeah. Now, here's something I think that everybody's thinking. You ever find any gold? I wish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm still looking. <laughs> Did you, you obviously meant look for treasure at some points in time. Oh, yeah. Awesome we on. went on, on, the, on the West Coast here in Port Townsend. It was... Um, we were after uh, the governor, SS, USS governor. It was a, a wreck that went down in the 20s, I think. And, and they was reported to have gold. gold on it. Yeah. Yeah, they all got gold on it. And they're safe, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. There was There's no, no gold, no safe? No. Well, we found a couple diamond rings from the, one of the cabins and stuff like that. I don't know well, no, that, seriously. Yeah. How do you find a diamond ring in a wreck 900 years old? Oh, I don't know. How do you find that? No, this is only... 90 years or what? Well, it doesn't eight. matter. It's 90 years. You're still finding yeah. a diamond wreck. Bring yeah. in a wreck. <laughs> it was a wreck. No, it was just luck. I mean, just being at the right, again. It was Kerry Donahue who did found that. I found it. But talking about the gold, uh, it was a an English boat that went down. It was off, off, off of Russia with Russian gold on it. And in the 70s, 78, 79, they were all on it. Uh, two W Walton and William, Wharton and Williams okay. divers, and they they were after this tons of gold that are on there, and they found it. And the guy, they had to dig through the the collapsed decks and stuff like that. And when they finally got to the gold, the guy, I found the gold! I found the gold! He's holding up a nice shiny bar of gold. You know, everybody wished they were on that wreck. Interesting. But, uh, it does happen every once in a while, oh, but every, not how you think it does, no, eh? No. Yeah. It's, well, uh, even even in, in Florida, what's his name there? Um, Fisher, when he found the Conception, all the gold jewelry and all the gold off the, the wreck of the, the Spanish uh, uh, galleon. Is that right, eh? That's it. 
Yeah, I always think, and I, I still think, oh, yeah, I want to go to Florida and I want to go and find some. There's lots of stuff there, eh? Instead, you got a telephone and some steel balls. <laughs> yeah, some steel balls. But you know what? A piece of incredible Canadian history. Oh, yeah. The, you know, that's very terrible. admirable. The bell, what was it like cutting that bell off and bringing it to the surface? There must have it been some quite, emotion. It, there was because they had the family there. So, family from the, some of the so, uh, surviving families from the, there was 28, 29 guys that died on that. On the thing, we put on the one of the ladies. Dad was there. And she wanted to. He was a beer drinker. He loved his beer, so he got a can of a uh, his favorite beer, Sweeps or whatever. I can't remember what brand, but um, we put a put it in the wheel hose for him. Oh, and, no uh, kidding. Eh? Yeah, you so went down. You oh, well, you went down when you went down into the boat. You put it in the wheelhouse. Yeah, and Bruce. Took the can down and up in the in the bridge of the Fitzgerald, he put the he put the well, can in, can through the window, and then when when they did the bell, they they, they scribed all the names of the, the we 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 took the old bell off the ship's bell, and that's in the museum in in, uh, in uh, Sioux, Michigan, I guess, but um, the the new bell. Which was replaced had all the names of the of the survivor. Of so you the, pulled the original bell off. You put a commemorable bell back down with the correct. names on it. That's of right. Note. Yeah, that's how we did it. Interesting. There was a. Let's, let's see. I think this these pictures aren't very good, but that was. Nah. Uh, there was. That's how we had the tag and height. Bruce oh, okay, that's that little arm hand finger there we're just playing with us yeah. right there. Right there, the little thingy there, the tagonite. And that's one of these thingies right here. Or is it this one here or a different one? It's a little different than that one. Okay. But there's a... Yeah, I mean, you can have that. Oh, I'll thanks. That. And then and the Fitzgerald, you can have that one. It's not a good picture of the bell. This is the original bell that was on there. Yeah, I'll give you all these. It's a large piece of Canadian history. You know, a large, large piece of Canadian history, and it's, you know, it's pretty darn special, I think, for you to be a part of that, yeah. to take and do that for those people. We were just watching a documentary the other day, and Gordon Lightfoot, and his, when he, he was when talking about, yeah, made that song, and he got it, when he made it. Yeah. Excellent. 